I had a Jewish man to call me from Kansas City. He heard our program. He says, my father and mother were the Jew. They were killed in World War II. And I'd like to know what I heard you say a little bit more about this. And I talked to him about the Khazarian people, which are the people of Israel today. And uh, I explained to him that there is no Jewish bloodline from Abraham. It doesn't exist. The idea that they keep that ideal alive, the reason they keep that ideal alive is the very fact that it helps them extract money out of people. That's what it all has to do. And there is a group of Satanists that use our Bible and they use the name of the Jews to extract money out of people and control people. After I finished talking with this Jewish guy, he accepted Jesus as his Savior. They had convinced him, and I'll thank the Lord for this, they had convinced him that he was great because he was a Jew. And that, oh, he was a Jew, and that made him a great person. I explained to him that there's no flesh can glory in the presence of God. And I explained to him that the prayer shawl was a scam. And he said, well, can, that don't mean I can't wear it or... I shouldn't wear it. I said, brother, the Bible said in John 14, 16, the word comforter is the Holy Spirit. Would you change the Holy Spirit for a dead piece of rag? Nobody in their right mind would do that. The Holy Spirit is the gift of God. Without the Holy Spirit, you can't be saved. I explained to him and talked about it a little while, and he gave his life to God, and he entered into a covenant. He prayed to prayer with me. And I told him, when you pray this prayer, the blood of Jesus will be sprinkled on you, and you're going to be a great person. And you know, he was kind of crying when he got off the phone. He was 60 years old. They had had a hold of this man's life for a long time. And I thank the Lord that we're able to bring people to the knowledge of the truth. Aren't you glad you can touch somebody's life? That's what it's all about. But you know what? The knowledge of what we've learned, in this ministry especially, has really been valuable to a lot of people. And it will open your eyes to some great things to where you not only can help people, but you can make it to heaven yourself. I think a lot of people has their ideas focused on the wrong thing because the Bible knowledge that we have today is basically reversed. You know, I told a guy at a radio station, he said, well, you can't blame every Jew because somebody is bad. I said, brother, I didn't even insinuate that. The average little Jew walking down the street, the average, I said, he has no idea what you're even talking about. <clears throat> but these Satanists that are claiming the ideal of Jews being their race is actually a lie, and it has sent a lot of people in the wrong direction. They convince people that they are holy and they don't need the blood of Jesus. And they have did this because of not walking with God. And this is the whole problem. I want you to go with me today. Go to 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. I want to start there. And I want to show you how this power that's over America today, and over Israel especially, would be multiplied in the last days. The Bible said, Straight is the gate and narrow is the way, and few there be that find it. But broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many go that way. <clears throat> I explained to the man at the radio station, I said, hey, I love some Jewish people I know. They have nothing to do with that. I said, you want to know, think about it. All the money that we give to Israel, this country, I could go back over how many billion dollars they gave them every year. You go over there and there's still some little people that are still poor like they've always been. It doesn't change anything. How I many of y'all think that's strange? Obama was in office, I think, eight years, and every year I think they had to give them, what, four or five billion dollars? Huh? Yeah, probably 11 million a day. That's, that's really sad because it doesn't change anything. Well, why didn't it change anything? Because the money only goes to the Satanists who worship money, who control Israel. 
They have brainwashed these little guys and convinced them that they are something that they are not. And you know, they're working in our country today. They're working on our country by television, radio, newspapers. They own the whole thing. And they have already completed that ideal in most of the world, especially Israel. In 2 Corinthians 4, 4, I want you to notice something that kind of puzzled me a little bit. Notice what it says in verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the fight, the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. And Paul said in verse 5, he preaches not himself, but he preached Jesus, Jesus Christ and him crucified. If you notice something, it's very sad that mind control is so powerful. And the God of this world, he blinds the people through mind control. And the sad part about it is he, he blinds a lot of people and causes them to do things that he ordinarily, without mind control, would have no chance of doing. But mind control goes so deep. It goes deep with education. We was talking last night, me and Dejan and Michelle, we was talking about learning. There's a German historian called Hegel. Many people don't know who he was. But we tried to figure out what this guy was saying. And we studied him and we studied him and you know what we found out? We found out that by history, by studying history, we learn nothing. <laughs> ah, how smart are we? We learned a whole lot. What'd you learn? I learned that we learn nothing through history. <laughs> that wasn't really a joke, but it's the truth. That's kind of, he was a real idiot. But I mean, they lifted him up. Anyway, the whole idea is that Jesus warned the people about this. I want to show you how powerful that this mind control is. Last week, I talked about Numbers chapter 16. How many of y'all have picked up on that chapter yet? Look at number 16. I want to move through the Bible. I want to show you what's happened to people today. Many people today, if you talk to them, they'll think, oh yes, I, I, I'm a Christian. Oh yes, oh yes, I, I believe in Jesus Christ. That's what the little Jewish guy told me. He said he believed in Jesus, but he really didn't know anything about covenant, and he didn't really walk in the Spirit because he had a prayer shawl. You can't mix the two. Because if you mix anything with the blood of Jesus, how many of y'all know it's polluted? It's so far above this world that there's nothing can be mixed or any, any other way with it. But in Numbers chapter 2, I want you to get the idea of this book because it follows the theme of the Bible. Okay? This is very important. It follows the theme of the Bible. And it says in this chapter that the people had come to a point where they had said to Moses... Look in verse 2. These guys rose up before Moses a certain children of Israel, 250 princes of the assemblies, and they were famous in the congregation, men of renown. So they were people probably that had the money. They were people probably that called the shots. If you look in verse 3, they gathered themselves together, and they come against Moses and Aaron and said, You take too much on yourself, seeing that all the congregation are holy. Every one of us. Every one of them. And the Lord is among them. And so why are you lifting yourself up to say you're holy? Now, I want you to look at this because this is a disease. And it will grow on people when they begin to trust in their self more and more and more. These people had accumulated this knowledge that they were holy by fellowshipping with the devil. And you can find this whenever you look in this paper. I handed out a few of these. I talked about Ezekiel. And uh, if you look in Ezekiel, you will find in chapter, what is it, chapter 28 or 26, 26, 28, something like that. I put it in here. And you will find, there it is, chapter 20. Verses 8 and chapter 23, verses 19. They had brought their worship out of Egypt. 
This is sad because they had worshipped the devil to such a degree that they had created in their self personalities and the mindset. In that book of Numbers where we were at in chapter 16, you find out that God had opened up the ground and let fire come out and devour these people because of what they'd done. And on the following day, they said, Moses, you've killed the people of God. And then God killed so many of them that the total came to 15,000. You would think they would have learned by seeing the fire came out. But I'm going to show you how powerful the mind control is and why people should fear God, why people should take heed and learn how to control their minds. Some of them think I'm a joke. Go ahead. I know there's a lot of people think this ministry is a joke with the Bible preaching. Oh, we don't really need all of that, Pastor Inman. Go ahead. Let me tell you something. It's not a joke. You would have thought they would have learned. I mean, if I took you here and showed you let me show you what this does. He says, you, in verse 13, they, Moses made himself a prince over them. But if you go to Numbers chapter 16, verses 41, you have killed the people of the Lord. They didn't even learn anything, and the fire of God came out and killed all of these people. Do you think that's strange? Huh? I mean, I think I'd have went somewhere and sat down. I wouldn't have been that to begin with, but that's just kind of what they did. In verse 30, it says that they, um, if the Lord make a new thing, and he says that they opened up the earth, and they went into the pit. They opened up the earth, and they went down quick. That means alive. Into the pit. Then you understand this happened. And that's what it says in verses 32, 33, and 35. It says that 250 of them, uh, they got them too with the fire. Look over in chapter 16, verses 49 and 50. It says in 49 that 14,700 besides them that died about the matter of Korah. So this came to approximately 15,000 people that died. 14,700 didn't have to die. You wonder why they didn't die. Did you ever think about that? I mean, one wonder, wonder why they, they didn't repent. I used to wonder about that. You mean to tell me it didn't repent? I can show you a little something else that's strange. Go over me, with me now to Isaiah 47. I don't make this to the people because I brought this out a little bit to where uh, people... could learn what we're talking about by the way of television or the, by the way of radio because people can hardly find this. Glenda Boyd brought it out very clearly because this is not illustrated maybe with caps, capital letters or something like this. People could overlook this. But if you notice something, it says in Isaiah 47 verse 8, Therefore hear now this, that art given to pleasure. And this is what Satan is, and this is what they have today that's given to pleasure. Usually this refers to sexual perversion that they call hedonism. But actually, <clears throat> it goes to deeper than that, all the things of pleasure, because they're so holy. You'll see in a minute. It says they're caught up in the pleasures that dwelleth carelessly, and you said in your heart, I am. Do you see this word, I am? In verse 8, this is a controversy and they're challenging God. I put this here in the paper that you can see this very carefully. And it says that in Exodus chapter 3, they said to Moses, well, who is this? What should I tell him, Moses? He said, he said, tell him I am that I am. In other words, they claim here in 47 verse 8 that they are actually going to challenge God for his identity. We call it hijacking a person's identity. So they have begun to believe that they are God. That's not hard to see that, is it? It says that you said in your heart, I am. And none 
else besides me. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. This is what they're saying. So the reason that they did not challenge, or that they did challenge Moses again in number 16, falls down to the level that they think they are God. This is what we call self-worship. And this is what Paul preached about in the last days, men shall be lovers of their self. So, you know, there's no flesh can glory in the presence of God. You either walk in the Spirit or you're going to hell. <laughs> That's basically how much God thinks about flesh. I don't care how much you try to do and how good you are, that doesn't work either. But look what he says in verse number 9. These two things shall come upon thee in a moment, and one day the loss of your children, widowhood, they shall come upon thee in their perfection for the multitude of thy sorceries. If you look up this word sorceries, notice what it says in enchantments too. They had really gained a knowledge of evil. They learned about the works of Satan. I bet they could tell you, Brother Homer, the name of every fallen angel. They could probably tell you their names. Oh, they had a good relationship with the devil. But you ever think about this sorceries and enchantments? If you look up the word sorcery, I mean, I could have brought it out. You know, it's mind control. Look what the Lord said to them in verse 10. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. Thou hast said, none sith me. Look what God said to them. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it hath perverted thee. You don't want to learn the arts of the occult. Can I hear an amen? amen? When you learn the art of the occult, you're cursing your soul and sending yourself to hell. You think, oh, it won't bother me? Well, go ahead and try it. I'll wait on you. This is where you're at today. People have no fear of God. They have no knowledge of God. But they're gaining faith based upon a bunch of people that are Satanists who are controlling our networks in this country. Newspapers, televisions, they own it all. Let me tell you something. You don't make it big in this world preaching the Bible. You can make it big in this world if you know how to preach around Jesus and